The final issue that Thomas Cromwell faced was the issue of Parliament. Throughout the early years of Henry's reign, Parliament was hardly ever called. It didn't sit at regular intervals like it did today. It was called on the whim of the monarch. When the king or queen wanted to call Parliament, they would, and it was usually only done to raise money uh, for wars often. But Cromwell needed to reform this because of Henry's foreign policy, his constant engagements in failed wars. There was a much more serious need for income and therefore reform to the way in which business was done in Parliament. It needed to meet more regularly, it needed to have more power, and it needed to be more reliable in giving Henry what he wanted, especially in terms of tax. So what were the solutions that Thomas Cromwell came up with in order to make sure that Parliament was much more malleable, much more easy to manipulate? Well, one of his reforms was that for the first time, Thomas Cromwell forced Parliament to physically divide in the Houses of Commons when they were voting on a certain issue. Literally physically stand on one side of the building or the other. Very much like the Houses of Parliament as it is today. By doing this, it showed quite physically, quite dramatically, who supported the king and who opposed him. That way, those people that moved to the opposition side of the house could easily be bribed or intimidated or threatened into changing their mind. By doing this, Cromwell ensured that he could manipulate and bully Parliament into giving Henry and Cromwell what they wanted. Furthermore, by dividing the house and having a good idea of who was for and against, Thomas Cromwell would then meet with or send letters to those people who had opposed his ideas and stood on the opposition side of the House of Commons, he would write to them and tell them that they need not attend the next meeting. In other words, this ensured that the only people who attended the next vote were people who were for it. This is blatant corruption of the system, but it worked. Finally, in order to control Parliament, Cromwell made expert use of propaganda. Ahead of introducing new laws, he would have pamphlets produced and even small books produced in order to sway the opinions of those MPs that might be voting. When they knew it was coming from Cromwell, they knew the consequences of not supporting it. And so this form of propaganda mixed with threats and bribery and intimidation helped to ensure that Cromwell was able to pass his laws. So here we see the key problems and reforms introduced by Thomas Cromwell in order to extend the royal power. The problems of crime and justice the problems of control in Ireland, in Wales and in the north of England and the problems with Parliament and the royal finances. Hopefully this video was useful for you, uh, for you in learning a little bit more about Thomas Cromwell and his reforms and how this helped to centralise power uh, in England under the reign of Henry VIII.